Welcome back to Volumes, and in this episode I spoke with my friend Aisha on the LGBTQ plus community and women's rights. So if you're really into that kind of stuff, check it out, and if you're not, then definitely check it out and learn a bit about it. I definitely learned a bit about myself, so let me know if you're learning anything, and thanks for checking out the episode. So, uh, would you like to sort of introduce yourself to start off with? Okay, are you, are, are we going? We are now recording. We're yeah. rolling? Yeah. Okay, um, I'm Aisha Daughtery, uh, I'm 21 years old. What else do you want to know about <laughs> Um So uh, this episode is sort of like all uh, orientated around the LGBTQ plus community, uh, women's rights and things along those because you're quite vocal about those things. Yes. So to start off with, how did you get introduced to that sort of life of being vocal about those things? Um, I think after I came out, I sort of realised that like I was, I was meeting lots of other queer people and stuff like that and I realized that out of most people I have it very good I have it a lot better than most of my friends do in in the way of like lots of them can't walk down the street without people just screaming at them or whatever lots of them like have been not disowned by their parents but you know they've had like serious problems with their families and stuff like that and I've I don't have any of that I'm very lucky like I'm just gay and that's it I don't really experience like any level of oppression on a day-to-day level and I think that it's important for people who have that privilege to be vocal about things if they are safe to be kind of thing do you know what I mean um so and also I'm a writer so I very naturally gravitated towards shouting about everything that I find important um so yeah basically when after I came out and and became comfortable in who I was which was actually very very quickly luckily enough then I just started talking about things on social media and reading a lot writing a lot you know getting in touch with people who were similar to me in that kind of way so yeah that's pretty much it how long ago did you come out and what was that sort of experience like for you um I came out a few times I came out to like people at school and stuff when I was around 14 um as gay and then was just like I kind of just I didn't forget about it but there was like no one else that was really gay in my year at school it was like a couple of other girls um but I was friends with them so well kind of distant friends so it wasn't gonna be anything you know more than that so I didn't really get to explore at all I was very young um so I ended up like seeing one girl from like quite far away usual and then I got a boyfriend and I was 16 so I had to like come out again when we broke up do you know what I mean so I came out originally when I was 14 I think I came out to my parents when I was 15 and then again when I broke up with my boyfriend because I was like, Jordan, I'm a lesbian sauce, so um, <laughs> which was kind of sad. But um, That must have been a hard conversation. To oh, have. I think, it, yeah, I mean, it, must, it was probably a lot harder for him to be <laughs> fair, but he just was like, I know. <laughs> That's literally what he said. He was like, I know, I was just holding on for as long as I could. I was Aww. like, oh, honey, it's so sad. But we're still best friends, so it's great. Like, nice. We get on really, really well. Um, yeah, sorry. So, yeah, I came out a few times, but basically I was quite young when I came to terms with everything. And um, my parents were pretty much great about it. My mum was, like, really upset, I think, just because she was really shocked at the start. Um, and my dad was actually, like, in America for, like, a few months when I came out to my mum and my little brother was in hospital and, like, I was a mess. And, you know, when I, like, came home from school and I couldn't stop crying one day, so I sort of had to tell her, yeah. do you know what I mean? It wasn't really something I could hold in for any longer. Um, but I realise now as an adult like it was very bad timing to put my mum kind of through that yeah but I just I guess I just didn't think that she would think of it as something that she had to go through because it was like my issue do you know what I mean okay but that was obviously quite selfish of me but I was only a kid um so yeah I was she she cried a lot and stuff for a little while my dad like just didn't really talk about it and they're great like I'm so lucky to have them They, they don't care at all now um yeah they're I'm very very close with my parents and I think that they kind of like having a gay daughter <laughs> like I think they maybe think it makes them quite cool I don't know <laughs> yeah but everything's cool now um going back to what you said about like how you know people that uh, are mistreated quite a lot so from my perspective of course like I, I'm not in that community I don't know mm-hmm. what it's like so wh- what are these people experiencing on a day-to-day basis well it's generally people who appear like like they dress or present themselves like out with like the gender binary right Right. so obviously I don't do that I'm very feminine and you know the worst thing I get walking down the street is cat called which obviously isn't fun but like it's not it's nothing to do with like my gender expression or whatever um one of my best mates is like um very overweight trans gay 
like wears glitter every day <laughs> just very flamboyant um in his gender expression and like literally every single day even when he's with people people will either look stare point or you know do a lot worse sorry uh do a lot worse and like yeah lots of people that i know that kind of thing happens to but i yeah as i said i can't really at all it's, it's very horrible yeah. it's a scary world out there so do you think like uh like that sort of like bigotry is just as prevalent as it has ever been um yeah i would say so because i guess now we're kind of at a time where people are a lot more it's hard like in the past like even like 20 30 years ago people weren't expressing their gender like physically out, mm -hmm. it, like publicly sorry um as much as they are now because you know lots of one wasn't really like a thing that people would have been at all safe to do you know even though now they're still not really safe to do but like safer i suppose and you know things like gay marriage was illegal and like yeah. people looked at the lgbt plus community in a completely different light to what obviously the majority of people do now that's why things like this are legal and thing ah, i'm gonna touch it um, but yeah like ah, it's horrible it just i think that it probably is more prevalent now than ever but only because more people are kind of doing it you know what i mean right, more people right, are yeah. less afraid <clears throat> And that's that means that there's more people who people can pick on. Yeah, and I suppose with things like the internet, a lot of people can like spread hate, and then other people can get behind that really quickly. Completely, so, yeah. and yeah, like kids are being brainwashed by all these like forty year old bigots who yeah. are posting pictures or you know sharing people's pictures who like appear in a way that they don't like or they don't want them to look yeah, like yeah. or whatever, and they're thinking that's weird and, and it's horrible. Like if you hear your parents say something about someone who you walk past on a street and you're seven years old and you're going to grow up with that kind of mindset and and yeah it's really not cool do you think that's just a sort of a generational difference or do you think that's something that's sort of ingrained in humans and it'll always sort of exist i think people are scared of things that are different generally yeah. but i think that it is partly a generational difference in that while all of us have been growing up things have been changing all the time like we were alive for gay marriage to be legalized we've been alive for you know people recognizing trans identities and stuff like that our parents albeit they are still alive for that but you know our parents generation and our grandparents generation and stuff they have lived for a very long time without being kind of having their eyes open to all the things that we've kind of dealt with very very quickly and that's why we digest difference i think yeah. a lot easier for the most part you know most young people i would like to think are kind of on our side with things yeah. like that but and accepting and yeah. open about different perspectives for sure but i do think it's because we have had to adapt very quickly because lots of things are coming out all the time you know like new whatever new sexualities new gender identities like we we do just kind of we're just like okay cool <laughs> whereas yeah. like our parents it's a big shock for their sort of generation i think because it's all happened in our short lifetime yeah yeah for the most part um so pardon my naivety but you're saying like no sexualities so what do you mean by that well i mean like obviously when like people weren't just all publicly straight right then they were just like gay uh -huh. you know and you know they were like gay or lesbian and then people were like oh actually i kind of am attracted to like men and women and then obviously trans identities came forward and you know then people were like oh i'm attracted to everyone yeah. <laughs> or like you know i don't really care about gender i don't care about sex or whatever and that's when people were maybe some people are more comfortable right. with like using different labels like pansexual or queer or whatever so like that's all happened in our lifetime. Uh -huh. That's what I mean. Do you think it's important to have these labels? I think some people find labels important to their own self-awareness. I think that it's labels can be great. Well, I mean, it's completely up to the person. It's just circumstantial. Really, some people don't care about labels at all and don't find feel the need to use labels. But other people do because, well, I don't know, maybe, maybe they don't have a reason to. Maybe they like the kind of sense of identity that it gives them maybe they like how it gives you kind of like a community you know people mm -hmm. feel a lot more confident when they're hanging around with people who are similar to them like i've always used i just well i i say i'm a lesbian or just that i'm gay or whatever but i never really did the whole bisexual thing even though i sort of thought i was for quite a long time right i was just like i don't care enough <laughs> um but i really like the kind of sense of community that it brings 
labeling yourself like all my friends are queer right and it's great <laughs> what is, what, that the word queer seems to be quite a like a flowing word like it can adapt to every situation what does it really fundamentally mean oh well i don't, I don't know if i can be <laughs> quite um, a weighty question yeah well it's okay i mean again like people everyone sort of uses words in different ways to you know what suits them or what they kind of believe but to me i think I always use the word queer as an umbrella term for just like anyone right. in the LGBTQIA plus <clears throat> community. Like, um, it doesn't have to refer just to sexuality. It can be obviously gender and stuff too. Just basically anyone who isn't like cis and straight. Right. Okay. But again, um, I think people maybe use it for different things. I really am not quite sure, but that's what I use it as. <laughs> yeah. So it's, yeah, I can adapt to like yeah. the individual. Yeah. For sure. Um. Uh, speaking more on queer do you want to talk about about queer theory um, all right and your, and your platform sorts yeah so last year i sort of uh did an open call on my instagram for submissions uh for this little little thing called queer theory which i kind of started um sort of meant to be like an <coughs> online publication um for queer people from all over the gender and sexuality spectrum um to submit their artwork to so i got like lots of photographers and writers and artists and stuff coming forward with their work and it was actually really really successful yeah, when yeah. i did it at the time i really it kind of it was it was really really good fun but then i got sad and stopped doing it i wanted to do it kind of like as a monthly thing right i'm thinking about starting it back up again but yeah i wrote an article for you at the time didn't i yes um all about it yeah it was basically just like a cool little creative platform i wanted it to sort of serve as a time capsule Right, like, right, of right yeah. now like how young queer people are existing and like what how they're treated how they're feeling what's happening you know it was everything from like intimate pictures of like you know queer relationships queer love or whatever and you know how the kind of intricacies of of difficulties felt by queer people that are in relationships and stuff like that um from yeah all across the gender spectrum too which was very much what I wanted to do I just basically wanted to try and like I said earlier on use my somewhat all right platform yeah. full of gay people um to kind of just like amplify people's voices also I want to be an editor so I was like what better way to do it than yeah. like so you made your own job almost yeah, yeah. pretty much I mean <laughs> I wish I could just do that as a job yeah. but well it seemed like from my perspective a lot of people jumped on this really quickly like a lot of people wanted to get involved um, and does that sort of like is that transcendent throughout the entire queer community? Are a lot of people like very supportive and like to get involved? That's an interesting question. Um, in my own personal experience, yes, it's a very. I mean, obviously, there's lots of problems within the queer community, which I won't delve into right now. But like generally, all like I said, all my mates are queer and very creative. Like I study English literature at uni mm -hmm. and I study poetry. <laughs> Um, that's one of my modules and like everyone in the class is queer and everyone right. in the class wants to like do work together you know they, everyone wants to collaborate people are working on anthologies just, just now and um, the teacher is a queer woman and she's amazing and oh. she um yeah amazing, it's just yeah. it's just class she's always like you know telling us about opportunities and things like that and it seems to be because you know when you're in a minority group you are probably generally inclined to stick with the minority group and to you know raise each other up it's a safety thing i think yeah. but also generally queer people tend to be quite creative so i think that don't know why that's a thing but it just seems to be so i think that yeah with things like creative opportunities people tend to want to be involved um because it's a nice safe space yeah so going back to saying that there's uh, some negatives in the community as well what do you mean by that oh well i don't really personally experience well I just like help. <laughs> Is it like any sort of community? There's always like a uh, vicious people. Yeah, in it. for sure, yeah. right? People are like obviously like turfs, right? Right. Um, Post code wars of the queer community. Yeah, like pe lots of like cis white gay men are very horrible to, you know, gay men that aren't like pretty and flamboyant and feminine, and air quotations, you know, and like. It, there's always going to be problems people are like you know if people are non-binary lots of well not lots of trans people but some sometimes trans people are like you're not trans enough i'm gonna get problematic can we stop <laughs> <laughs> i don't know it's not really a question that i feel like i can answer right yeah properly that's no because it's not something that 
directly influences me. To or... make a quick transition then, do you think that uh, queer people as a whole are represented very well in like mainstream media? Oh, absolutely yeah. not. No, no. Okay. <laughs> no honey, no. Um, yeah, I think that's a huge, huge problem. I wrote an art, well, I wrote for like this girl's dissertation um, about queer representation in the media not long ago, so good question. Um, yeah, I think that there's a huge, huge, huge lack of queer representation in the media. I think that generally there's like a token gay person and they're always very similar to the last 12 token gay mm. people that you've seen yeah. in a movie or whatever. There's definitely not enough uh, lesbian representation. There's definitely, definitely not enough trans representation at all. Um, and it's po- problematic and it's going to hurt children <laughs> and we really need to get on that. And yeah. I think that that's why it's important for people to be, you know, doing stuff like what you're doing, doing stuff like what I did with Queer Theory. Yeah. I think that growing up as a kid like growing up in a in this kind of day and age where things are changing all the time and it is actually hopefully going in the right direction it was still very difficult to not have anyone to identify with in the mainstream media at all like there's only so many times you can watch Ellen DeGeneres as a seven-year-old <laughs> and be like it's, it's not even that good you know what I mean yeah. <laughs> do you yeah. think there's uh, enough female representation itself in the mainstream media um I think that female, I mean, there's always females in mainstream media, isn't there? But I think it's more about the, how good or like right the representation is. Right. Like, I really, I think that like with women in general, there's there's, like lots of tropes, like the manic pixie dream girl trope, which is very problematic and that gets utilized consistently and it's really dangerous to like young girls watching things um I think that often when you watch a film and then look at who directed it or who wrote it if I watch a film and I'm like that like all the women in that film were represented exactly in exactly the same yeah. way like they were all very similar to each other and they were their characters weren't really explored it's almost every single time directed by a cis man mm-hmm. um you can just tell, especially when it's like queer women as well. Like yeah. every single lesbian film, apart from maybe like three, is just lesbians having sex. And it's like not even realistic in <laughs> any way, shape or form. And every single time you watch a film that's like that, I mean, you still, you return. You watch it 500 million times because yeah, yeah. you just want to like grab onto like any sense of representation you can get. Right. Especially when you're like a young, wee gay. But like... <laughs> yeah like every single time you watch a film like that and you're like I bet that was directed by a man because he's obviously never had lesbian sex you know what I mean it's always just yeah I think I think it's not necessarily the amount of representation for females in general queer women obviously is a completely different story but I think it's more about how they're represented right so sort of like the the core issue is that it's who's making the films and it's yeah. that most films are made by these straight white men in Hollywood completely yeah. who overtly sexualize women yeah like constantly it's it's you can't make a film about some like a, you can't write characters that you don't understand uh, absolutely yeah do you think there is starting to become more uh, representation or is it still just as bad as ever for queer people you mean or for, uh, women? for women and and media uh i think that yeah like i mean like i said like most films have women in them and stuff yeah. like that that's pretty much been the case for quite a while yeah. now and it's great we're seeing recently there's been a lot of like all women films and stuff like that or like you know all like female lead female led films and they're made by women and yeah I think it's improving do you think it's like uh these like all female casts are almost like a rebellion to the the way that it's been made for so long um I don't know whether it's necessarily a rebellion I think it's more about like representation and giving people something to identify with and like creating a sort of safe right like comfortable feeling space for people who have been misrepresented for centuries to kind of feel like oh actually yeah (laughs) things are going well I don't know what about uh, representation within our government do you think that we have enough uh, representation for the queer community and women in general in in the UK Uh, no Um, I think that the government is corrupt and I hate them 
Yep, yeah, that sounds about right. I, I can agree with that one, yeah. Um, so do you think that there should be more female politicians and more... Uh... Yeah, of course. I think that that's always been such a prevalent issue in pol- within politics like throughout the entire world. But yeah, in the UK, definitely. Um, I think that when oh, I'm really just going to go on a rant about the Tories I can't be doing that um, I, I mean think you that... <laughs> can you, this is your platform you can do what you want um, I think that like it's right Ruth Davidson it's a shame that she is a Tory because she's gay and I want there to be nice oh I can't I can't talk about I can't do it I'm going to make myself angry <laughs> I just think that they need to be getting like people like oh, people who the, when the Tories are in charge, minority groups are never going to be represented in a right. positive light um, <clears throat> at all. I don't feel like any of our best interests are going to be at heart any time. I don't feel comfortable with the Conservative government being in charge of people who I care about. Right. And right, okay. I think that if there were to be more women in politics, then potentially some of them would be good <laughs> for that kind of thing. I, I I don't know. I don't... That's a long, long story. <laughs> Do we have any questions from our live studio audience? Come on. I think a lot, a lot of people... I've had this discussion a lot, especially like with our friend Andrew, and we talk a lot about how different would the world be if females were in power. And yeah. I don't think... I don't think... I'm quite open with the... the topic because I don't really I'm not really like a super feminist or anything like I'm very open to lots of different people and lots of different ideas and things so when I talk about like oh what would the world be like when, if women were in power like I don't know it's yeah it's an thing, interesting think, concept yeah I, I wouldn't get too worried about like saying something offensive because I don't know it's an open platform like we can just talk about it. We're not targeting anyone. So, like, for sure. Oh, no, what, do, what do you think the world would be like if more women were in power or like world leaders for women? It's hard, isn't it? Because the laws probably wouldn't be all that different, and like bad things would still happen all the time to women and to everyone. Obviously, like the world, you know, things like I I read this this uh, it might have been a Tumblr post. I'm not sure what it was, but you'll have probably have read it on something, and it was like saying um imagine if all men had a curfew of like 9 p.m like imagine what you could get up to and I cried when I first read it I was like what like I've never thought about that before because you do I I don't go out after that time if I'm by myself and if I do then I'm probably scared or like I'm holding my keys in my knuckles or I'm gonna get a taxi that I can't really afford to be getting because you're scared of things happening obviously women do harm to women too but statistically it's less likely like considerably less likely and it's just I think that if all the world leaders were women there wouldn't be much difference like in politic like politically but I think that everything would feel a little bit safer Mm -hmm. in my opinion um I think that if the people who were making the laws were people who had similar experiences to you, then you'd just feel generally more safe and comfortable. Um, But at the same time, like, we're all living on this earth, so everyone needs to have a say. But I just think we need more of one. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Yeah, I, I can completely agree with what you're saying. And um, from my perspective, like I don't need to worry about anything like that. And I never that's not something that ever pops out of my mind. And to hear you say that, it's it's so clear that you're saying that from like a place of just raw honesty. Because that it's it doesn't like hit me in a sense that I, I can relate, but it mm. hits me in a sense that I've I've been oblivious to this. Like I'm like na- I'm completely naive to this. Yeah. Um, in my poetry seminar the other day, I realised how much of a wanker that makes me sad. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, we all had to submit poems. It was like gender week. Right. Um, so that's all we got given. We all had to submit a poem that was about gender. <laughs> and that was literally it. So I was like, oh my God, what am I going to do here? Um, and I submitted a poem. It's not really a poem. It's kind of just like a list of things that like 
like what I just mentioned about like how you hold your keys when you're walking yeah. home and stuff like that. Um, and my teacher that day, um, we, we had a cover teacher and he was like a cis white straight man. Um, and he said to me afterwards, he was like, I've literally never thought of half yeah. of those things in my life. And he's like probably like mid thirties and he'd never thought about it. Um, it's, it's mad. Like oh, it was really, it was, it's a good wee piece, but <laughs> he was yeah. like, yeah, it was, it's crazy to think that because my little brother thinks about things like that. Tommy actually asked me the other day, he's 16, my little brother. He did the whole keys in his knuckles thing when we were at a party and he was like, do you walk home like that? He was like, I heard the girls at school talking about it, 16. I was like, yeah, I do it all the time. My dad was like, why? He was like, you could, could you not get in trouble? That's like a weapon. I was like, it's my house keys. <laughs> but, yeah. And he, my, like, he just didn't think about it. But I think maybe the younger generation are catching on to things right, like that but yeah. I think it's probably got a lot to do with social media because that's where you learn yeah, yeah. to do things like that um, and like I don't know if you guys have ever thought about this but um, the, the, the bit in the poem that I'd submitted that my teacher was like I've never thought about that was like uh, it's kind of hard to say without reading it but it was basically like about how when you're walking home at night if you walk past like a man then you are to like memorise his face do you, it's scary. It's horrible. I, you have to do it. You have to do it. Memorize what he's wearing and stuff. And um, my teacher was like, "What? What?" Like he was like, "Oh my god! Of course you do. I've never thought about anything like that before." And it really took me. I mean, it didn't surprise me, but I loved it. I mean, I, I loved that I made him think about it. Do you know what I mean? Like I maybe teared up. <laughs> but it's crazy. Like it's just crazy the difference in upbringing and like like you were saying about if all the world leaders were female maybe things like that would be less maybe we would feel more confident but then it's not about that because it's still going to be terrifying really isn't it i don't know it's all a big shit show <laughs> yeah um yeah i, I feel very uh, like a lack of education on those kind of things when you say stuff like that because it's really these aren't things that we're kind of like told about yeah or we have any knowledge of well that yeah it's only things that like I guess you're told about when, when you your mum to... thinks you're old enough or right. when you read it from your friends online or from strangers online like it's not like you get taught these things in high school do you know what I mean yeah. which is kind of scary that as well I don't think I was ever told to avoid like if you're walking on a street avoid or like try and get out of the situation if there's like a man on his own I think it's just almost like a natural yeah and St. Dennis I don't remember ever being told or warned about oh you could be in danger here it's just almost like a a sense that you have completely yeah. yeah that's so yeah that's so true I was just yeah I was just when I said that out loud I was like actually I don't know whether I ever have been <laughs> pardon me told to do things like that yeah it's weird it's such a natural instinct like we know that there's always kind of a element of danger in that kind of situation yeah it's not fun I honestly feel a bit lost for words after that <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm going through every like I don't know everything I've ever heard in my brain and like everyone's sort of like it's like the pennies dropped almost and everyone starts to correlate do you want me to read you the thing I wrote yeah absolutely yeah of course just because content and yeah. also you might you might learn more yeah I'm, I'm <laughs> I like definitely to teach learning men. <laughs> <laughs> um, let me find it No, I don't Never. think so, no. Not at all. No. What about things like violence? Like, do you worry about being stabbed on the way home or do you not even think no. about it? No. No. That's maybe I'm do, Maybe I'm an idiot, though. I don't know. Maybe some other men do, but I, I definitely don't. What was that? Being drafted for war. We don't have to worry about that. Uh, I mean... I don't know. I don't know. I don't even think I've passed my medical. I think I'm fine. <laughs> okay. I, it's called femininity that's what I had to write about do you not think uh, today and the way the world sort of works now that women would still be drafted for war if we went to the war no really I don't think they would I really have not Maybe, one clue point. I would need to fact point. check myself on this but I think uh, it's, so military is compulsory in Australia but I think it's compulsory for both sexes for both male and female. Yeah, it's the same in uh, Israel. Yep. You've yep. got to join the military yeah. for like two years, I think it yeah. is, regardless of yeah. sex. Um, yeah, wild. Yeah. Well, you don't have to have to, but like you won't get a job after yeah. school and all that if I you don't think, do it, basically. Uh, 
I mean, you, you, I mean, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that you get free university really? if you if you are drafted. Maybe that's not correct. Interesting. I, I feel like I've I've learned that somewhere. Maybe I didn't know that. My friend from Israel that I was uh, that I spent summer with this year, he was really really worried because when he left the summer camp we were working at, he was starting. He was joining the army. He's right. from Israel. Right. Um, but he's like tiny wee guy. He really didn't want to do it. He's yeah. like you know not in any way aggressive and he just he yeah. hated the, the concept they just hate hates war and stuff but he was like i have to do it because it looks really bad if you don't have it on your cv yeah like everyone has to do it but then again they don't need to be like on the front line you can do things like he was working with horses in the military do you know what i mean <laughs> like it's just like i think it's just like about where you are or yeah. something like that i'm not really sure i don't know the specifics i don't know it's it'd be interesting, interesting to, to have someone and sort of talk about that yeah yeah, yeah you should find someone maybe yeah. i'll fly him over from israel for you absolutely <laughs> shall we to read that thing yeah just while it's here okay femininity this is how to stand so that you look thinner how to open a sanitary pad without making a sound how to laugh so that you don't sound raucous why to memorize the face of every man who walks past you every car registration plate this is where to sit on public transport, in taxis, how to sit, how to keep loving your grandfather, your male friends. This is exactly how to hold your keys inside your pocket when you are walking home, why to always be in company, why to play no music through your earphones, how to reject him without making him angry, but that's probably not possible. This is how to pick locks with curvy grips, how to clench up so it hurts less, how to recover in silence in the place that made you sick. It was interesting to see my uh, wee teacher's reaction. He was like, why have you ever thought about things like that? But it's wild. Yeah, so, yeah, these are things that you would think of on a daily basis then. Well, not to all some of them, degree, but yeah. like, yeah, what, yeah, yeah, yeah. I finish work at like 10 when I finish and it's like a 30, 40 minute walk home just up Great Western Road. Like literally that's the only, they live there and I live there, the house that I work at. Um, and my dad like doesn't let me walk home by myself like I when he says like when he checks to make sure if I'm home like I'm, I'm always like I'm in the taxi but usually I'm walking because taxis are like five pound you can't be right. doing that but like the last few times I told you this like the last few times I've walked home I ended up getting a taxi the last couple times I worked because the last few times before that like things happen almost every single time and it's like a Monday night or like a Wednesday night or whatever at like 10 o'clock like yeah. on a very well lit shopping street do you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's, yeah, that it's kind terrible of thing. that this is still the world that we live in today, and, and it, yeah. it, how do we even sort of like fix these issues? It's educate. Yeah, educate. Yeah. You need to get people while they're young and teach them what's right and what's wrong, and boys need to stop copying their aggressive dads. Yeah. And, <laughs> I, and it's stop really using boys will be boys excuses and oh, things like sure. that. Oh, for sure. It's yeah. all going to yeah, everything has to change the education systems, the rhetoric we use to address children, everything, but it's going to take a lot of time because it's every single person. It's like I was talking to my flatmate about this the other day how we talk about feminism and like how people don't do enough or whatever because, you know, lots of people I, I never I, I'm one of those people I never feel like I'm doing enough and I'm I'm not I'm not really doing much for like speaking out for people or anything anymore and I I it just feels very it's hard to explain basically she was saying that like she feels very guilty because she's very politically aware and very socially aware and feels very very strongly about um feminism and you know everything that I feel strongly about basically everything that we've talked about today and she's a politics student she's very articulate um but she was saying that she often feels like she doesn't do enough for things like I post a lot on social media what does it do probably nothing because people who don't care about it like probably just scroll past it anyway it'll only people who are reading it will be people who feel the same as me I think the majority of the time I don't know but I would presume so like I scroll past things I'm not interested in but um we were talking about like everyday feminism and how like going to protests or posting on social media or writing or you know doing podcasts making films whatever is all very radical like every single thing that we do actually is still somewhat radical and then she was saying that like just telling your like correcting your granddad or something is almost just the same because you're you could just be targeting the same amount of people like I don't know correcting your dad if he's racist or whatever like is just we were talking we were talking about it like when it was we were talking about jobs and how lots of people have very feminist jobs but don't necessarily 
like maybe they don't go to protests or they don't like shout about stuff but on an everyday level they're very like quiet in their feminism and we're talking about how that is just as good because we need people to be don't we need people to be doing both right, otherwise right. Like, we're not going to get anywhere do you yeah. know what i mean um but i was thinking I, th- I think a lot about that how it's every single person who we talk to we could be having just as much of an impact as standing on the streets yeah shouting not in every situation but i don't know <laughs> no no i get i get where you're coming from yeah do you think that things like protests help yeah i think that people need to stick together and i think that when the majority or you know i think yeah the more people hands on getting involved and trying to change things the better yeah i'm i feel strongly about that yeah uh yep how would you respond to men who say kind of like feminism is an attack and it's anti-male and not uh, not all men are like this and not like this kind of a response to that whole fear of walking home and passing mm. by a man it must feel like quite an attack on a lot of men if they don't really they're not that sort of man yeah like, they're not to those people I understand. Um, good question. Well, firstly, I would be like, can you please Google the definition of feminism because it's not at all anti-men. It's about mm-hmm. equality amongst all genders. But um, I also, I think about that a lot too because my dad, I think, because I chat a lot about stuff like this, my dad is literally the nicest human being I have ever met in my whole life. He is so gentle and warm and like nothing that we kind of tend to attack men in general for. <laughs> Um, but what I would say to that is I don't think it's meant to be on a personal um, basis at all. It's about systematic oppression. Um, it's about the way that the world has always been run, you know, politically. Uh, and the structures of society have very much oppressed women and it's been men oppressing women every single time um, th- throughout history. And that's where the problems lie. It's the way the education system works. It's the way that boys and girls are separated in primary school when they're talking about different things in different parts of sex education it's the way that we talk to our sons differently than we talk to our daughters you know it's it's not a personal thing it's the way men have been raised is very very different to the way that women have been raised and that's the problem (laughs) yeah absolutely like I know my dad's a great person but he's probably inherently inherently sexist compared to my mum it's not his fault it doesn't make him a bad guy it's just probably the way he's been raised has been very different to how my mum was raised do you know what I mean my dad isn't sexist but I'm just saying in general um do you think there's something uh, psychologically different between male and female no idea no idea <laughs> do you think there is sort of like uh somewhat maybe gender specific things that do exist in the world I mean yeah obviously there's like well not gender gender's fake so no gender's fake but can we explore that that sounds like a, a interesting well, statement well gender is just a social <laughs> construct people just made up words to associate with people with penises and people with vaginas and then made up all these little things that they thought each one of them should have and that's right. how the gender binary was created it's a social construct it's not a real thing sex is is well biology but then also it's still not binary in any way at all because intersex people exist and things like that like yeah gender's so fake (laughs) and I think that that I think that like destroying the gender binary is what we need to do and I think that that's when if women were in charge in the world it would work if the gender binary was also destroyed because then men wouldn't be trying to steal their position. <laughs> right, it would, it would put everyone in the same playing field. Yeah, I mean, there's always going to be a social hierarchy, I think. I Well, I don't know. I'm still learning about all that kind of thing. I don't really know if I've got a fully constructed opinion yeah. on it yet, but um, the way that the world is in capitalist society, for example, even if we destroyed the gender binary, just woke up one day and no one remembered anything about gender, mm-hmm. if we're still li- living under, like, if we're still living in a capitalist society, then there's still going to be a social hierarchy because there's always going to be the, like, buyer and the maker. Yeah. So if. 
Let me get this right. <laughs> Sorry, I'm going on <laughs> such a tangent. <laughs> so if we had to, uh, if you think that abolishing sort of like the the principles of uh, gender identity would help oh no i didn't say that okay sorry that's where i'm confused oh uh, i just mean like it's very again not really something that i could be talking about because i'm a cis woman like it's not really something that i and that my area of expertise is um but i don't know i'm still learning about all this kind of post-gender concept as well i don't know how i feel because gender identity um is an important thing to quite a lot of people um especially well i know lots of trans people who very much like the fact that gender identity is a thing that they can right, yeah. explore and uh-huh. they um you know it, it, transitioning from like male to female for example or, or whatever like they feel very very good when they do like specifically female things obviously it's just some people like yeah. i just mean personally i know some people who that applies to but then i also know quite a lot of people who are just like genderless or whatever they don't care or they're non-binary or whatever and it's it's i'm really gonna say something that i shouldn't be saying probably <laughs> since i'm gonna shut up <laughs> um actually i think i can completely agree with you though and in, in the respect that if we did wipe out gender completely then we probably would have uh, created a better world for majority of the people. Yeah, I think it's like it's like labels. It's just yeah. exactly the same thing. It's just made up words, really. Yeah. That's it's the same thing as labels, sexuality labels, right? Like, I don't think that it's necessary to completely abolish gender as a concept because it isn't real anyway. Mm. If it works for people, then great. But if it doesn't work for people, then they shouldn't be forced into the margins of society because of it. That's what I mean. That was a good way of wording it, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> um, is there anything you want to specifically talk about? Um, and bring up? I want to know, Tom, you know how you were saying, <laughs> you know how you were saying, <laughs> you know you were saying about um, like lots of things that you would never have thought about before that like yeah, yeah. everyone else in this room has definitely had yep. to think about all for very different reasons maybe, but um, what, how does it make you feel to learn about things like that as like an adult with like <laughs> you know a girlfriend a sister like women in your life who yeah. you care about what how does it make you feel do you feel like you are like i don't know do you do you feel like obviously you're a very nice person do you feel like you, Thank you. are responsible for the way that like does it make you feel horrible to think yeah about the women i actually in your life bit, yeah to, i honestly feel a bit embarrassed actually really? but i didn't I, i'm that it's so obviously there but i'm so oblivious to it and i don't it's almost like i just didn't care right you know what i mean i I just i didn't bother to for it to process in my own brain Mm. um and i I think i'm actually speaking for quite a lot of people when i say that because i I definitely know that most people that i would know that's in the same position as me Mm. wouldn't know that or wouldn't pay attention to that either and that's not through any fault of your own at all that's just through like everything we've just been talking about how you've been taught or raised or whatever and it's no one's it's like no no it's no one's fault it's just like how things have worked out don't feel embarrassed we're all learning all the time (laughs) (laughs) or just a bit stupid really that I've, i've been so oblivious yeah absolutely um but i guess like in the same respect it's like if I don't need this one skill, why bother learning this one skill? Yeah, but I know you mean. I, I think the problem there with that ideology is that I don't need to know the skill, I just need to know it exists. Mm. And I didn't even know it existed. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think it's very easy to be unaware of your own privilege when yeah. you're not, like, faced with oppression on a day-to-day level or yeah. whatever, or, like, the people around you aren't. Um, yeah, yeah, I hate to say it, I feel like I'm probably in, like, the peak position in society as like a generic white male that like a straight man that i don't need to worry about anything really Mm. of like any sort of oppression or anything like that but you are worried enough about affecting other people to do a podcast about queer people or to you know what i mean which is a great thing like you're doing more than most people (laughs) do you Um, feel a responsibility to do that because you are more aware Sorry, I'm interviewing you now. No, no, this is good, yeah, I like it. Um, 
I don't know if I necessarily feel a responsibility in, uh, and that's why I'm doing it. Mm. I just feel like, why not? If it helps, why not? Yeah, you know? for sure. That's a good I, way to I, think I, This it. is definitely no, no strain on me. So why shouldn't I do it? Um, I, I like, it's like that sort of like analogy that we were talking about the other day of like, um, uh, like does people, do people like Bill Gates, do they have a moral uh, guilt to save the world because they're the only people that can they're the only people mm. with enough money to like help change uh things like climate change or help change like uh the food crisis and stuff like that should they do it and i mean i think a lot of people would agree yeah, yeah. They, they should they have that responsibility because they've got to that position they don't need to worry about anything else Completely. so why not go out their way and fix things i think yeah moral guilt's a very interesting <laughs> phrase i like that one um i think that yeah they definitely don't have enough of of a moral they don't feel enough moral guilt otherwise they would have done it but then again it's exactly the same thing it's like this is why you hear people who are working class who vote for the conservatives they're like i came from nothing and i've worked so hard to get to where i am and obviously it's a completely different level from like bill gates saving the world but like often this happens when you talk to people like you know like i guess our parents generation who in this part of the world mostly are working class or were at least considered working class the majority of their lives but if they've worked their way up from nothing literally nothing and they've you know worked three jobs at a time they want to like protect their money and their own families and their own selves and that's often the kind of ideology that drives people to vote for the conservative party right yeah. um whereas they're not working it's they're not working in the interest of like minorities yeah. but they're unfortunately working in the interest of themselves the, well themselves and their families yeah and you can see why that's appealing can't oh you? yeah absolutely but that's the same thing with like bill gates he probably has a great way or like you know people who are that big time like mark zuckerberg for example yeah. right probably lives his best life right he probably yeah. don't know anything about the guy but he apart from the fact that he made facebook right but yeah. and i know that he's probably a bit of an, he's meant to be a bit, a bit of an arsehole but i can't quite remember why but I'll look into that alien. later i don't know who knows some question about that guy <laughs> but like he is still a young guy he probably likes having money he probably has holiday yeah, yeah. houses he probably treats his family oh, yeah. all the time he probably loves it and he yeah he worked for it like he did something quite revolutionary yeah and like yeah what th- that's such a good question like how much of a responsibility does he have to help out other people like i think personally i wouldn't be able to help myself i would have to like yeah. give a lot of money away and stuff like that but then i i do understand why people who have worked from literally start from the bottom and have worked their way up yeah completely by themselves i can understand why they would want to keep what they have and but also i yeah it's a tough one isn't it yeah it's definitely a, a tricky situation but i mean like in like in perspective to like this guy could like really just change the world and still make no dent on his finances yeah and i think if it's that uh like different uh, a balance a scale in a sense that you can do something that big and it mean that yeah. little to you then why not just do it Completely. it's not going to take any time out of his day or any money out of his bank account really literally yeah if it if it literally would not yeah change his life i i'm completely perplexed as to why he wouldn't <laughs> exactly and <laughs> i think maybe like sense. that's that's like a good ideology to live by if it's not going to uh, impact your life and the the greater means of it all mm. then just do it if you can benefit anyone just do it yeah i completely agree and even on like a much smaller level i um, was talking about this with i can't remember with my mom i think the other day how like when i <laughs> i'm a very confident person right so, like socially i don't really care i'll talk to anyone which is very lucky but um when i'm like walking past someone on the street and i'm like i like her jacket or whatever i can't not tell the person like i feel I've done it a million times and I'm like, Aisha, you can't just be going up to strangers and chatting to them. Like, you just can't do that. But I feel so guilty if I don't tell them because yeah. I'm like, 
that doesn't mean anything to me. I don't yeah, feel exactly. weird about doing that. And it might literally make their day. Maybe they're having the worst week in the world. That, yeah. Maybe they're so self-conscious about going out in this jacket. Maybe it's the first time they've ever worn anything that extravagant in their yeah. life and they're feeling a bit weird about it or whatever. And maybe that would make their day. And I know that's a very self-absorbed thing to say as if I could like change someone's mood. No, but, like, I really But it is. Though. When someone comes yeah. up to me and compliments me, I'm like, oh my God, I literally love you. It changes your day. Yeah, changes it totally your does. changes your whole perspective for Completely. a little bit. Yeah. And that's exactly the same thing as you're saying. If it's no skin off your nose, you might as well do it. Exactly. If you scroll past a picture on Instagram, you're like, oh, my pal's not looking too great in that wee photo, if that would even come into your head. Like it. Yeah. What does it mean if you're yeah. like share share it? I always I always share. It. No one ever does this for me, <laughs> but I always like share. God, here I go. <laughs> I always like share everything that my friends do on social yeah. media because I'm like, well, I want to like show them off. I want to like, you know, make them feel good and make them feel like people are appreciating what they're doing. Or like, yeah. even if it's even if it's like a selfie that they look great in, I'm like, I'm gonna put that on my story because I love them. Do you that's know what good, I mean? Yeah. And like, I think that's a really, I think yeah, like on small scale level like that and also on a big scale level like if you're gonna help people or change anything that's important then i think we should all be doing it yeah um and i mean even like on the smaller scale of things that if we all did it then that is something that would lead to something massive yeah for sure completely yeah. and, and just oh, have a happier world i know maybe we should just all change the world yeah. <laughs> start here the thing is the like what you were saying about bill gates being able to like change everything like you know literally every single thing to do with like climate change yeah. and food systems and stuff like that like these people could just click their fingers and make yeah. that happen and for some reason they're not doing it god maybe it doesn't come into their head i don't know what the reason is but whatever like it's annoying because I think that it's going to need to take something like that yeah, to really yeah. change everything. And it, the people who are, who people who do have this amount of money are unaware of their own privilege. Yeah. They are unaware that people are so many, I mean, they can't be actually unaware, but they are in a position where they can turn a blind eye to it and be like, I'm not political. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? So like, I, it's so annoying because I do think it's going to take one of the richest people in the world to, to, do to change yeah. things like the structures of our society. Yeah. Especially when these people have, this one individual will have more money than any other country that exists. Completely. Any other nation. Um, it's crazy. So, like, it's all in their hands. If they want to change it, they can change it. We just need to wait on them doing it. Exactly. So, yeah. It's annoying because it's like, a very, very small amount of them and then there's all of us. It yeah. just feels like we're being, like, stepped on yeah. by a big, expensive leather boot. <laughs> they must profit off it somewhere yeah that's well of course they, want, they do they want us yeah. to be like this you, that's what keeps the rich rich right exactly. keeping everybody else poor and keeping everyone under you um, so we're coming to the one hour mark so do you want to have some some nice closing words or anything like that anything you want to bring up um well thanks for having me it's been a no, pleasure thank you for coming sorry on. for just chatting absolute rubbish for an hour <laughs> no it's been amazing thank you for coming on honestly. no absolutely anytime man it was lovely to lovely to be here Thanks for the coconut water. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> any any questions? Any closing words? All good. That's a wrap. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thanks for watching the podcast. I highly suggest that you check out Aisha's Instagram. She does a lot of awesome stuff over there and generally is very vocal about things. So yeah, check that out. And thanks for watching the episode.